Welcome to Industry Innovations, Energy Powers Everything We Do. On this episode, we're going to share how technology is improving energy efficiency, safety, and reliability. We're even going to see technology in action. We will learn how to implement the technology and results of an industry survey. All of that starts right now. Welcome to Oracle Industry Lab in Chicago. I'm head of Oracle Industry Lab, Burchin Kaplanolo. Today, we're going to share how technology is improving energy efficiency, safety, and reliability. Utility companies have been managing their grid last 100 years. And the way it's designed is energy is produced in one location and transferred to customer's premises. With the introduction of solar panels, wind turbines and batteries, the grid is becoming more complicated. Energy is actually flowing both ways. Every day, we're introducing new devices and data to our systems. So utilities has to manage them safely and reliably. And their systems are siloed and in different places. And sometimes the processes are manual. Also, we as the consumers are no longer just bill payers. We are actually contributors of this network. We get smart thermostats, water heaters, solar panels, EV chargers, and we're contributing to this network. Utilities and the customers has to figure out how to manage these devices as they become more active participants of the energy grid. To answer this challenge, Oracle's energy and water unit has been providing end-to-end -end solutions from customer engagement, to device management, to data orchestration. Our mission is to deliver technologies and solutions to improve the lives of global citizens. Today, we have two guests, David Mello, Senior Principal Consultant, and Brad Williams, VP of Industry Strategy. Before we get started, we want to keep this engagement going. Like, subscribe, and comment, and ask us questions. We will try to answer them. And if you don't have any questions, tell us where you're from. We want to hear from you. Now I'm with David Mello. We're going to talk a bit more about how we, the utility customers, are becoming contributors to the grid. And we wanted to use a real life example. Hi, David. Hey, Bertrand. Well, why did you pick an electric vehicle? Well, I was starting to have mechanical problems with my 18-year-old combustion engine car. My wife and I are both technologically minded and ecologically minded. And we decided we were not going to buy another gas car. It was time to look at EVs. And how did you pick the vehicle? We looked at a bunch of the different EVs that were on the market. My wife really liked how this car looked. And I really liked that it was four wheel drive and it had a lot of horsepower. So it was fun to drive and it was gonna prepare us for winter in Chicago. And some people are concerned about the driving range. Has that been an issue for you? It's not a problem for our lifestyle at all. We live in the city. We're basically back and forth to the grocery store and 21 miles back and forth here to the office. And I get to charge here at the office. So it's really convenient for us. Well, utility customers like you are buying electric vehicles, solar panels, batteries, and becoming contributors of this ne their, their network. Did you know that that charger is actually partially powered by the solar panels on that building? I didn't know that when I first bought the car, but through some investigation, I was able to find out that it did. And that made me really happy because I was lowering my carbon footprint with the electric car and then charging the electric car with solar panels, I was able to lower that carbon footprint even more. And when I was doing that investigation, I found out that electric cars like this and homes can be little batteries that feed power back to the grid. Isn't that amazing, David? Yes. Well, thanks for joining today and teeing up the conversation now I want to dive in a bit more on the subject. I'm with Brad Williams. Hi, Brad. Hey, Bertrand. Good to see you. Great to see you too. I just had a conversation with David about how he's contributing to Energy Grid with his electric vehicle being charged by the solar panels. We're going to go a little bit deeper about that topic. But before we do that, what are we going to see today? So I want to start by talking about um, the Powerwall, which is a, a battery energy storage device, which is uh, one of a, uh, many distributed energy resources that we have here in the lab. David's car is another example of a distributed energy resource. And we've got several appliances uh, throughout the studio here that, have, uh, that are capable of being distributed energy resources. So where do we start? So let's start with the battery since we're here. And the idea here is the solar is connected directly into the battery. And you talk about David's car, it, even if it's being charged from the battery, it's coming from solar, typically. The utility is also connected, and the solar is, has about 33.3 kilowatts. 
And that's plenty to power the studio, but maybe not with everything else on in the lab. So the idea is like when, when the loads are low, the battery is charging. And then when the uh, loads pick up, we use the battery to, to um, stabilize that demand. Uh, and that way the grid is more uh, stable and reliable. So how then, how does this affect the grid? Well, the point is that if everybody comes home at the same time, then the grid could be under stress because of the peak load. Typically they come home, they um, turn, turn on the air conditioning, um, they um, start cooking their dinner, plug in their vehicle, whatever it is. And that, if everybody is doing that, that causes tremendous stress on the grid and could cause reliability problems as well as uh, cost issues because utilities would have to add more infrastructure that everybody would pay for. Wouldn't that be also safety concerns? Oh, definitely. And that's one of the things that um, Oracle brings uh, the ability to provide that situational awareness so uh, the crews know exactly what to expect when they are um, trying to deal with outages and whatnot. We have uh, operations mobile device that uh, the crews have that situational awareness. This neighborhood is out of power, but this building is still powered. Uh, so what's going on? And that way we can uh, deal with the safety issues of like reverse flow back into the grid and things like that. And right behind you is a smart uh, heater, so water heater. So can you tell us a little bit more about how that fits into the uh, system? Yep, similar to the Powerwall battery, this is actually an energy storage device. It's thermal energy because it's hot water, it's electric hot water. And the point is we are able to preheat it to a point where uh, we don't have to be heating it during the peak demand times because it's already hot water. And then as that, as that is consumed, we could uh, delay, the, delay the heating of it until it's actually needed or the price comes down, the, the peak demand comes down. So it's a flexible re uh, resource, also a distributed energy resource that can be used. And, and one of the cool parts about this is customers are buying these appliances and they're using them. So we're making this available for the utilities to take advantage of that as, as a grid side resource of distributed energy resource by giving them the ability to see it, situational awareness, and model it as part of their operational tools. Well, I really like what I'm hearing. I would like to continue our conversation. Let's take a seat. So Brad, what role are we playing in this? Yeah, Bertrand, the, the grid is changing rapidly and it's requiring the participation of customers, the utilities, and the regulators to work together and orchestrate the solution. Fortunately, Oracle has a very comprehensive, the most comprehensive distributed energy resource management system uh, that's available. And we call it DERMS. And what are the components of DERMS? So it starts with uh, the device and being able to model and create a digital twin of every single distributed energy resource device, a solar, EV charger, yep. uh, whatever it is, all those devices. Next is field service. We have to go install it, inspect it, make sure it's operating, find, get those details to create the digital twin model. And then the, the network and the device level operations. And then once we have that, we can get into customer and program management, which gives us the ability to control that and allows customers to participate to help um, mitigate cons constraints, but also provide a more cost-effective and more reliable system. Finally, there's market operations, which allows you to aggregate these devices, participate in energy markets, and then analytics is what pulls it all together, helps us to forecast and help, helps us to continuously improve going forward. So what is the goal of the DERMS? Yeah, it's, it's, it's two things. It's uh, energy equity and flexibility, Try, trying to lower the cost for everybody and provide flexible and more reliable uh, service to their customers. Now yeah. that we understand all this structure. What are we doing different than other providers? I wanna say it starts with our optimization engine, which allows us to um, select the lowest cost resources uh, as, as a combination, as a group, that best mitigate the forecasted constraint need. So we are always looking ahead and identifying what are the best resources that we can apply to this situation. Uh, with that, we are uh, being able to support the continued growth in this industry. So this might sound a little intimidating for the utilities. How are they handling it today? So the first thing is 
the device management is, is a key part. And we mentioned that already, creating that digital twin model and making that part of their common processes. The next part is providing flexibility of these devices and knowing what they're capable of doing to best uh, schedule them to help mitigate constraints. The last part is scalability. It's like it's one thing to be able to test it, and that's one of the reasons we, we have this lab. We can test it in a lab environment and then go deploy it in a, in a, in a utility uh, proof of concept, and then we can scale it to, from hundreds of devices to millions of devices as we grow. And that also means we got to have architecture that can support that. What if a utility has lots of existing systems? So if there's existing systems, we also have to support um, their, their investments that they've already made. And our solutions are built on an architecture that allows for um, a, co a composable architecture, which means we can, we can use what you have already and we can leverage that as part of our solution, make yours more valuable and more effective for what you're trying to, trying to do with more devices and take advantage of that from an overall end-to-end -end system. Can you give us an example? Yeah, absolutely. Very common in our uh, industry uh, is SCADA, uh, supervisory control and data acquisition, basically remote control of field devices. Yep. And utilities have invested in these SCADA systems for many years, they're very, com very comfortable with it. But we're able to uh, wrap around those existing investments with our uh, advanced distribution management system, as well as our distributed energy resource derm system. Uh, and, and, and use that uh, composable architecture as, as a more advanced system for our, our utility customers. There seems to be a lot of devices on the grid. How are we handling them? Yeah, fortunately, we have a team that's made up of many industry experts that have a lot of experience at this. And we can handle lots of different types of devices, many of uh, the existing as well as emerging protocols, uh, communication standards, uh, and we have these uh, architectures that can bring them in quickly into our system. Well, since you mentioned the emerging ones, the feature, let's take a look at that. What are we going to see? So our industry is growing rapidly and Oracle has invested a lot in this whole area of uh, artificial intel intelligence and machine learning. And we are applying this to all, all of these areas we're talking about, uh, grid management, distributed energy resources, and we are taking these technologies that Oracle is really investing a lot in growing our capabilities, and we're pushing that out to these edge devices. And wouldn't it be cool if these devices were just an extension of our Oracle cloud and could automatically respond to disturbances and help create a, a more sustainable energy future for all of our customers and our utilities? Well, this is a lot to digest and seeing the whole system actually working together. So uh, what does this, does this really mean? Like if I were to picture this, like if you have a microgrid and that microgrid can support a home or a community when the power is done and it will work backwards when it actually comes back up? Absolutely. That, that, that's one of the key, key opportunities of this uh, uh, edge intelligence is we would be able to identify very quickly that there's a disturbance on, on the grid and we would be able to isolate that and, and operate like, like our smart studio here, all uh, islanded from the grid. And we would continuously monitor the grid when it gets restored and then return it back to normal seamlessly and uh, create uh, a more sustainable, reliable, cost-effective energy future for all of our customers. Well, I'm really curious about industry adoption. And I know you have actually have done a survey. What was the process and what was the participation? Yes, we, we hired leading industry consultants in this area, and they surveyed uh, 60 uh, utilities to ask them about the growth of distributed energy resources. And what they're finding is that it's growing at a rapid rate and we need to, we need to start managing it. Is there a cost for this growth? Yeah, there's three. It's the consumers that we're talking about are just buying these appliances, buying electric vehicles. Uh, regulators are demanding this higher levels of renewables as well as government policies are likewise requiring electrification and distributed energy resources as well. And Guidehouse says that the, the rate of growth for distributed energy resources is gonna, is, for over the next 10 years, is gonna grow by about 100 gigawatts. That's like many large power plants and the point of that is that about 80% of that is going to be in the consumer's homes, the consumer uh, as um, residential and commercial uh, premises. And that's where utilities don't have a lot of visibility today. 
And so that just says we need to start go, moving on these types of systems. Well, speaking of innovative technologies, um, where does the industry fall on the adoption of drones? They're at the early stages. And most of the, our customers ask us, where do, we, where do we begin? And I always advise them to start with processes to start capturing and managing the actual devices and creating the digital twin models, integrating them into your systems for operational flexibility and program management, and then starting to deal with the scalability. Start, start with a pilot, like here in our lab. Uh, we'll work together. Then, then do a proof of concept in the field in, in your utility, and then deploy it system-wide, going from 10 devices to hundreds of devices to thousands to millions. And then architecture, scalability are absolutely important as, as we in, embrace these. We've got to have these, these kind of uh, needs to incorporate that as part of the plan to deliver that. Uh, and, and this composable architecture that allows you to leverage what you already have. Where, where can the audience get a copy of this report? We'll post a link here in the comment sections of that and make that available. Well, Brett, it's been awesome to have you here. We learned about distributed energy resource management. We learned about devices. We learned about the, the impact that we are now actually having on the grid. want to thank you for joining and providing your wisdom. Thanks, Bertrand. It's been a pleasure talking with you today. Well, what a great episode. <laughs> we learned today how technology is improving energy efficiency, safety, and reliability. And if you want to learn more about our applications, please go to oracle.com slash utilities. If you want to learn more about previous episodes, go to oracle.com slash connect and ask us questions. We're going to come back and answer them. And if you like what you saw today, please like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.